May I preach to you this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. I am a firm believer in the axiom, the simplest answer is usually the most correct one. Keep it simple and check the simple things. A friend of mine worked for one of those major computer companies that does all the tech support, and somebody called in and livid, just angry, saying, you sold me a broken computer. And he said, you know, I'm very sorry to hear that. Let's just kind of go through the checklist and make sure that we go through all the steps to know whether or not it's really broken or if there's something else wrong. And the person just, you know, really did not want to go down that road. They said, do you know how many computers I've purchased from this place and how much knowledge I have about technology? My friend's response was, let me just ask this first question here. Is it plugged in? <laughs> this question caused the person to be even more angry. And he said, just listen, humor me, just... That's the first thing on the checklist. Just humor me to know whether or not it's plugged in. And as you can hear that muttering underneath the person's breath, uh, breath you hear them leaning behind the desk, and all of a sudden you hear, oh. <laughs> and the phone clicked off. They hung up. The moral of the story is, before you complain, make sure you're connected. In today's Gospel reading from John, Jesus is using another I am statement. And if you remember from last week, whenever Jesus uses the words I am, he is immediately hearkening back to this idea that he is God. Because God describes God's self as I am. And so when Jesus says I am, we're supposed to pay attention. And then when he couples that with and you are the branches. For a group of people who in their time period knew so much about agriculture and who were just immersed in the culture of cultivating wine for both their sacramental and for their personal use. But I think that not even the disciples in that moment or us today if we're not careful, really understand how deeply Jesus was going when it comes through, I am the vine and you are the branches. I don't think I'm alone in saying that we live in what I would call a hyper-connected society. If you have a cell phone that is a smartphone, then probably like me, you think this is the bane of my existence. Because how many possible ways are there to get in contact with somebody? You can call them, you can text them, you can. So then why are we? There was a recent survey that was done, and this is especially so poignant in a post-COVID era. Of being lonely of not having those strong connections with other people in their community. An even higher amount said that they don't have these relationships to which they can turn. But what really got me was that only 12% of people said that they felt in their heart they had a best friend that they could reach out and talk to. And you know the kind of friend I'm saying. It's the friend that it's 3 o'clock in the morning. And when that phone rings and you pick up, what's wrong? What do you need help with? Did you just want to talk? So many people do not have that. And it's because we're so connected, but we're isolated. Jesus, when he says, I am the vine and you are the branches, notice what he says in the scripture. 
Those who abide in me and I in them, meaning those who persevere in their relationship with me, that's what abide means, and I, in persevering my relationship with them, they can do nothing without me because you are not connected to me. What if Jesus was not talking about simply being connected? You see a tree, you see a branch, you think connection. What if Jesus was actually talking about what it means to be in communion with one another? When God creates us in his image, he creates people who need more than just to be an acquaintance of God, who need more than just to talk to God once in a while. Being in communion with Jesus Christ as the vine and the branches means that we draw our life from Christ. Everything that we need, every breath that is within us, comes from our connection with God. And if we don't feel that deep sense of communion with God, then we can't be surprised when we feel alienated and isolated, not just from God, but from other people. God didn't make us to have acquaintances. It's good we have people that we talk to and sometimes we see them in different places and we know a lot of people. But God created human beings to have deep, meaningful relationships with one another, lifelong friendships with one another. And so here today in the church, if we're going to commit ourselves to being Christ-like, then we're going to have to ask ourselves how we build those relationships. We're going to have to ask ourselves who in our congregation is part of that more than 50% of our country who feel lonely. We have to begin asking the people who can't be here this morning who are homebound, are they lonely? Yes, that's the answer, of course. So Jesus himself is saying, draw life from me. And when you draw life from me, you will find a purpose in your life that you cannot imagine. Now, Jesus knew that his disciples were not going to get it right away. And we're his disciples today, and we still don't get it right away. And we have the benefit of 2,000 years of learning about this. So on the last night before his death, Jesus decided to do something that would seal his relationship with his disciples in a very special way. He told them, I don't just want to be connected to you, I want to be in communion with you. And so at the Last Supper, he gives the disciples the sacrament of Holy Communion and says, when you eat this bread and drink this cup, I am within you. I am giving you life. You are within me and within one another. So that's why today there are two parts to this service. There's the part where the priest gets up or somebody gets up and breaks open God's word. But there's another part equally important, I would say even more important, which is the Holy Spirit descends upon this church and consecrates these elements and Christ is present here. I don't know how he does it. I'm not concerned about the mechanics. I'm just glad he's here. Right? We'll save the theological conversations for after in coffee hour. So that when we come up and when we come and extend our hands and the priest says, the body of Christ, it isn't just simple food that we're receiving. Christ comes to us as food, yes, in a way that we can receive. But we're receiving so much more because we're receiving him. Now, speaking of not getting it, kids are the ones who I think get it more than anything. I had the benefit of being a chaplain at a K through 12 school that was a St. Stephen's down in, in Bradenton before I even went to seminary. And I had the elementary school chapel, which I absolutely loved because the middle school kids were starting to get smart with me. And the high school kids were too cool. But the elementary school kids, their eyes were still open and sincere. They were like, yes, we want to be fed. And this 
one little girl stands up during chapel and says, Chaplain, how can I connect with God whenever I want? Because I want to be with God, and I don't know how to connect with God. Is there like a secret handshake or something that I do that invites God to come be with me? And I said, you don't know the secret handshake? <laughs> and so I want to teach it to all of you this morning, okay, so that you can then teach others. And it's very, very simple. So I want you to take your right hand, and I want you to put about shoulder length apart like this. And I want you to take your left hand and put it about right here like that. Now, they got to face each other. You're not doing it right. you got to face each other, okay? Okay? Watch her. She's got the example. And then I said, this is the connection right here. Create a doorstep where Christ himself can stand and knock at the heart of your, the door of your heart. And so that little girl, whenever I saw her, she was always just walking around like this. <laughs> That's all she did. She just walked around with her hands in prayer. But think about this for just a moment. We think it's so complicated. We think that a relationship with Christ and being in communion with Jesus Christ is so difficult and challenging. But what if it was just as simple as joining our hands together, bowing in prayer and saying, Lord, in this moment, I invite you. You are the vine. I am the branch. I can do nothing without you. I have no life without you. Please, Lord, come and knock at the door of my heart. And I don't have many theological guarantees that I can offer. But that prayer is always answered. And so this morning, I encourage us as we come up for communion, as we go throughout our day, can we find a moment to pause and say, Lord, I desire that you would be with me and with me and in me. I am the vine, says Christ, and you and I are the branches. Amen.